Trouble for F1 drivers at the Singapore GP. The F1 caravan is finally back in Singapore. After three long years of being absent here, the Singapore GP is known as one of the most difficult tracks when it comes to the environment that the drivers are racing with, and that will surely present a huge challenge for the drivers in the following weekend. There have been so many changes in Singapore since F1 visited this track the last time in 2019, as Hamilton and Vettel were battling for the championship and the German stands as the last winner in Singapore. But this season, the drivers are back on one of the most demanding tracks when it comes to the drivers' bodies. And in this video, we're going to share why the drivers are up for an excruciating weekend. Don't go anywhere. Singapore hasn't been driven for two consecutive seasons since 2020. It was one of the 13 tracks that got cut off due to the COVID pandemic. In 2021, the quarantine rules didn't allow the racers to race there, and these bad things are finally over and behind us, as we are finally going to see some racing in 2022. Many drivers are in different teams since the last time this track was visited by the F1 caravan, and Hamilton is currently sitting at P6 without any chance of winning the championship in 2022. Verstappen could be crowned with the title in Singapore, and although it's highly unlikely that this will happen, Happen, chances are still possible, but Singapore will prove to be a much bigger challenge than what the drivers are used to, and rest assured that it won't be that easy in completing this race. For example, the temperature in Singapore will be well above 30 degrees Celsius, and although it's night, don't be fooled by the sun not being present at the track. Humidity can go well over 80% which would make the Singapore GP one of the hottest and most excruciating tracks that the F1 caravan will visit on the calendar. Drivers aren't really keen on visiting this track either, as a couple of them spoke about the conditions that they'll meet in the cockpit, with the temperatures there going well over 60 degrees. Hamilton said, It's hard to describe what it's like to drive a two-hour race in those conditions, but try thinking of what it would be like sitting in a sauna wearing a full fireproof race suit and helmet. If 10 is the hottest temperature of that sauna, then the Singapore race is a 7, and then you do a bit of a workout, some press-ups running on the spot and so on. It's evident that the drivers will lose an extreme amount of fluid through profuse sweating, and that is something that can indeed interfere with its performance. By losing such an amount of water through sweating, the drivers can lose concentration and their vision can be impaired too, which would eventually hurt their well-being throughout the race. Alex Albon is also one that we need to look forward to since he had an appendectomy during the Monza GP and he suffered from respiratory failure as a common complication of this surgical procedure. There were rumors about Nick de Vries replacing Albon during the Singapore GP, which was also spoken about by the XF1 champion Damon Hill. Regardless, Albon said that he feels ready for the Singapore GP and that he hopes to enjoy the challenge that this track will impose on him, adding, It's quite a tricky one because you are basically waiting for your lungs to recover, and at the same time your body cannot move as well as it normally can. You can't just jump back into normal training, you have to slowly build into it. It was kind of starting Monday last week when we really started to push it and see what we can do. I treated it like a 9-5 to five job training and recovery. Recovery is really important. So basically throwing everything at it, and day by day it was getting better and better, and we got to a point where the recovery was going really well. I don't think we truthfully had in mind Singapore on the cards, but just with the speed of recovery, it was definitely a possible thing. We sat long and hard to think about it, shall we do it or not, and I feel that I am ready. We will have to wait until tomorrow to see where it's at, because driving around here is a bit of a different beast," said Albon. George Russell also spoke about Albon's move to come back to the most demanding track on the calendar right after recovery, adding, It's definitely audacious to come back for the toughest race of the season, having only just recovered, but it just goes to show the sort of grit and determination he has, said Russell, who also added that he was in close contact with Albon's family after the tie underwent the procedure in Italy. I was in contact with his family on Saturday night because it was looking very scary at one point, but it's pretty impressive to see how he recovered so quickly. The human body is a scary thing. It just goes to show one minute everything is fine, and the next minute everything can change almost totally out of your control. It will be interesting to see how he gets on this weekend.
Russell also spoke about the requirements and the toll that the Singapore GP takes on your body, saying that not a single training in this world can prepare you for the challenge that the track itself imposes on the drivers. He said, it doesn't matter how much training you do, you will never be able to replicate what you go through on track. I have been training with at least three layers of clothes on every single gym session every time I go out on the bike. It's pretty uncomfortable. It's quite impressive how difficult the body handles heat, even in the sauna for half an hour. Even though you're not moving, my heart rate was well over 150, 160. That's what we will be experiencing in the car. And then there is the physical element and cognitive side of things. There are some drivers on the grid that have visited the Singapore GP multiple times in their careers, such as Daniel Ricciardo. The Aussie is on his way out of McLaren, and it's the first time that he'll visit this race with a team that's not Renault or Red Bull. But the challenge remains the same, and that is to keep your cool through the scorching heat in Singapore. Ricardo spoke about the challenge in Singapore, adding, It's the only race of the season where you crack open your visor to let in some cool air and instantly wish you hadn't because it's hotter outside. By the warm-up lap, your chilled drinks bottle is the temperature of a freshly poured cup of tea. Nevertheless, it's going to be a spectacle to race again in Singapore, as we all know that Singapore GP is one of the richest GPs in the world and one of the most visited tracks in the world. The city track is going to be spectacular, and with the city setting at night, it's something that will surely bring a lot of joy to the spectators. Apart from the heat and the extreme conditions that the drivers will meet here in Singapore, there is one more thing that you need to know when it comes to this GP, and that is the surface of the track. Singapore GP goes over some busy streets that will be closed just for the GP, meaning that they are very bumpy regions that the drivers will have to endure. Due to the new regulations from 2022, we've seen that bumpy city circuits aren't something that F1 drivers are keen to visit or enjoy. As Hamilton added, you are being thrown around in the car, bounced all over the place. There is compression in your spine. Your legs are moving. You're vibrating all the time, hoping not to lock up the brakes. It's crazy. It seems like the FIA will tweak some of the regulations when it comes to the porpoising issue, because according to them, the porpoising that will be felt here in Singapore isn't triggered by an aerodynamical phenomenon, but by the nature of the track. Therefore, it wouldn't be fair to judge the bouncing of the car just because of the surface of the track. But the question has to be asked, what differs these two types of porpoising? After all, they both have the same impact on the driver's bodies, so maybe the regulation itself was a scam after all. According to Hamilton, the turns that are so fast will impose a serious challenge to the teams. As he added, there is no respite because you are constantly turning left and right, left and right. It's like sprinting. I'm sure our heart rate here is higher than in other places. You've got to stay 100% focused for a full two hours, which is tougher than it sounds with the crazy humidity. Any small slip and you're in the barrier, so maintaining that total concentration is crucial. With that being said, what do you think is next for the drivers in Singapore? Do you think that the drivers will endure excruciating conditions? Let us know in the comments below.